Hello everybody, Insecure Penguin here, coming at you with actually my second PvP build video ever, and this time it's with Retribution Paladins. Now I'll be honest guys, I don't normally do these kind of videos because I never really find a class with a specialization that has this much potential. So my last one was my Brewmaster Monk back in patch 6.2 I believe, something like that. And that's back when Brewmaster Monks had a ton of potential, in my opinion, to do well in PvP. Well, now I see Retribution Paladins having a ton of potential, and they always have, but I see a lot more this patch at patch 7.0. So, let's go ahead and we'll dive right into talents and all that good stuff, and I'll do some splaining. Alright guys, go ahead and pull up your talent menu right here. So, before we really really dive into this, let me explain the build I went for. The build I went for was what I like to call a reversal build. No, that's not what it's officially called. That's what I call it though, and that's what we're going to stick to. So, the reversal build essentially is going into a fight with the intention you are going to lose, okay? As crazy as that sounds, bear with me. Um, you're going into a fight that you're probably not going to win, going up against a class, maybe against a couple of different people at once. And being able to turn this fight around 180 degrees and come out on top. And that's really what I went for. Um, I know when I play Paladin, either for arenas or battlegrounds, I end up getting targeted frequently and the reason being people know we're, we're paladins we heal a lot we run a lot and we support our teammates a lot so we are a big target once the healers are down they're going for us and that's what i've always seen consistently when i play paladins so what i decided to go for this time was a build that would combat that whole way of thinking so let's dive into it i'm going to show you guys a couple of Altern alternate talents, I guess you could call them. Uh, if you don't want to go for my build, so I'll give my suggestions for the ones, though, that I like for this build. So, uh, we're going to start off with Execution Sentence. Now, before you reach through my computer screen and slap me in the face for not picking Final Verdict, let me explain myself. I know Final Verdict is great. Your main Holy Power Dump, you know, which is increased by 20%, you know, why would I not pick that? Well, because I've looked at the numbers and to me, honestly, it's not 100% worth it. I went for Execution Sentence for the main reason that it's a big chunk of damage that is no longer a tick or a bleed. It is just six seconds and then they get hit by God's Hammer coming down from the sky, um, which I love. The 61k hit, that's a nice beefy hit. Final Verdict. If you look at my Templar's Verdict, 32k. I don't know if you can read it at the bottom. Uh, 32k hit. We'll go ahead and put this on. Now it's 38k. So really, I gained 6k. And again, I'm not in PvP combat. I'm not in a battleground. But 20% is not as much as you think. Um, and that's only for Templar's Verdict and for Divine Storm by 10%. So honestly, to me, it's not worth it. But if you're looking for that more consistent damage, do it. Because you may be very happy. Consecration, I will slap you if you pick Consecration. Okay, so for our level 30 talents, I went with Zeal. For the main selfish reason that you get a move that has two charges and it each time it generates one holy power as opposed to just Crusader Strike. Um, I like this because you get to hit him two separate times, so say you only want to hit him once and then do another move, get your three holy power and then dump it in a Templar's Verdict, you have the opportunity to do that. Um, I do like it because it does, you know, jump to nearby targets and cause zeal and you can hit nearby targets and just damage them. I'm not a huge AoE person at all, but if you can damage just nearby people with just some easy easy damage I, I would do it and so I go zeal um, but alternatively if you wanted to go with greater judgment that's cool too it's a 100% crit 
if they have 50% health or more and your judgment is a good thing to keep on your target I don't know if you've read up on it but if you have judgment on your target for eight seconds I believe or six eight seconds they they get you know increased damage from your holy power moves so you want to keep judgment on your target at all times so greater judgment may be the choice for you for me it's zeal um, fist of justice you must pick fist of justice if you're playing retribution I'll tell you that right now whether you run my build or not um, you're gonna want that stun and this if you use a holy power spending move that damages your opponent it's going to decrease your cooldown by eight seconds um, even if you do it once eight seconds less on that freaking you know one minute cooldown that's great you know you can get your stun back potentially more I'm all for that because another one of my talents will work very very well with Fist of Justice so moving on Virtue's Blade um, this is completely up to you I like all of these but I'm only gonna talk about Virtue's Blade Virtue's Blade it does three times normal damage if it crits so if you get really lucky and you get that critical strike you're gonna hit him with a whopping potentially 90k damage hit um, because naturally it does 32k so if you get that special crit that does three times normal damage 32k that's 96,000 I've done it it's cool people poop their pants when you hit them that hard it's wonderful so level 75 talent uh, I'm probably gonna get reamed for saying this wrong, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Uh, Justicar's Vengeance. So don't unsubscribe from me if I said that wrong. I promise. I'm sorry. Um, but what it is, is it's a move that hits for 44k melee range, and it restores your health equal to the damage you do. And, and, it does 100% additional damage when used against a stunned target. That means you're gonna get 100% additional healing if that target is stunned. So think about that. If you are getting your stuns back more frequently, you are going to hit this dude for 80K, healing for 80K. It, it's gonna be wonderful. I don't recommend using it constantly in your rotation because of that five holy power cost. It is a very costly move, but if you are saving it and you are stunned and you use them at the right time and say you even have you have you know judgment on your target you're gonna hit this dude so hard he's gonna regret playing the warlock we all know he's playing so you're gonna be doing very 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 good damage now moving on to the last two talents which are the key components to this build Remember, it is a reversal build, not a constant damage build. So, I went with Divine Intervention. Normally, I would have gone with Divine Steed or Seal of Light. I probably would have gone with Seal of Light because I love making paladins that run like they're on some special type of drug. But, this time I went with Divine Intervention because I could not pass those benefits up. It's a passive, reduces your Divine Shield cooldown by 50% in addition any attack that would normally kill you instead reduces you to 20% of your maximum health and triggers your bubble which means it's like a cheat death and a purgatory at the same time it's a cheat death because you would normally not die but it's purgatory because you get bubbled and you're invulnerable for just a short time but this is the OP paladin bubble lasts for eight seconds so it's gonna be great as long as you are not fighting someone who can dispel it so I love that and the next talent is gonna go hand in hand with that holy wrath is what I went with and I'll explain holy wrath deals up to 200% of your missing health as damage to up to four enemies around you that's outside of PvP in PvP it's 50% but think about that. We're not in PvP right now. I'm not in a battleground, but my health is 359. So say I was doing world PvP with someone. And he got me down to, let's say, as low as he could before my bubble triggered automatically. We were one on one -ing. Maybe I was getting 1v2'd. And they got my health pretty freaking low. And I used this right before my bubble. Right before I get that killing blow that would normally kill me. 
I'm gonna hit this dude into next week. It's it's gonna be such a hard hitting move. I mean, think about that. Half a 359. That's at least 150, 170. We're talking a big whopping hit. I've multi killed people with this in battlegrounds. I'm gonna have to show you guys. Uh, my brother and I we run a feral and a retribution paladin at the moment for skirmishes. It is hilarious because I'll get focused because they're not gonna want to search for the feral. They're wanna, gonna want to get the paladin who can do off heals, who can support the feral. And they're going to want to get me first. They focus me while the feral, my brother, tears them up. I blow up, and then it's over. I mean, <laughs> that's it. And then I bubble. Sometimes I don't even need to bubble. Sometimes it doesn't even trigger my bubble because they're just dead. And I can't get hit again. That would normally kill me. So, to me, that is so much more worth it as opposed to these other two. Which, the other two, if you're looking for constant damage, these are fantastic talents. Divine Purpose, 20% chance to make your next Holy Power move free. I mean, think about that. Getting two Final Verdicts in a row, if you were running Final Verdicts, I mean, you could be dealing some good, nasty, constant damage. Maybe you were running Seal of Light with Divine Purpose. Well, now you get to run around like a crazy man all the time because it has a chance to chain, which would be great. I don't like relying on chance 100% of the time. That's why I didn't choose it. I used to choose it back in some previous patches, but it wasn't that guaranteed strategy. You had to rely on chance. And so that's why I don't like that. Crusade, I tried it a little bit. It's definitely, it's definitely a good one, but you gotta get it to stack a lot. and. That's that's what was a real big turnoff for me was you had to get it to stack a lot. It's a great burst, but it's almost like you're a, a train that's starting up. You know, you gotta keep going and going and hitting and hitting and hitting until you get to your full damage. Um, it lasts for 20 seconds. That's great, but honestly, I would rather just go with Holy Wrath and just blow people up who think they're gonna win the fight. And so that's essentially what my build is. Um, some new changes they've done to paladins i really want you guys to check out uh the new blessings the new the new buffs that we have these are decent and you can keep all three of them on yourself which is fantastic um you can get a constant shield constant heals i mean they're not great and then a 10 percent chance to deal 30 percent extra damage as holy damage which is great i mean these are all nice little buffs that you can keep on yourself so keep those on you and honestly guys this is the build right here this is something like as i had stated earlier that i'm really really going to be trying for legion i honestly think i'm going to be focusing paladin and this is something that I've never really even tried to do. Normally I'll do warrior or I'll do monk exclusively, but this time I really see a lot of potential in this class and I hope you guys do too. Um, like I said, my goal is to, to play a class that can turn the fight around 180 degrees. I think I finally found the spec and the class. So I will have some arena videos up very, very soon so you guys can see how that works. And uh, you can see the comp I run with. So that's basically it. Hope to see you guys soon. Take it easy.